Hi there. Are you tired of scrolling through filters to find your perfect selfie? Let's break this digital maze and celebrate the real you. Let me tell you, beauty is not about perfection. It is about embracing your uniqueness. So together, let's start a revolution or a wave of change where we embrace imperfections. where authenticity rules over filters and there are real smiles which are shining brighter than any edited picture because in a world full of filters authenticity is the real magic hello well wishers and welcome to my channel aspiring minds in today's video we are going to discuss stephen leacock's short story called with the photographer so grab your virtual seats and let's begin In this video we are going to see the main characters of the story then i'm going to take you through the different events that take place in the story which ultimately lead to the three important themes which i have been able to outline from the story Stephen Leacock was a Canadian writer known for his light humor and gentle satire of human nature He was born in 1869 and he was also a teacher and a political scientist. His works often depicted ordinary people in humorous or funny situations which provide insight or information into human behavior. There are two characters in the story. Okay, we have the protagonist or the main lead. He is a 40-year-old man and his name is not mentioned. And we have the photographer. He is a drooping man in a grey suit with the demeanor of a natural scientist. This is the way in which he has been described in the story. Let us now go through what are the main events of the story. We have an introduction given about the studio. We have the protagonist. He is a 40-year-old man and he decides to have his photograph taken, so he visits a photographer's studio. The photographer portrayed as a very, you know, lazy, we could say unenthusiastic and a scientific kind of a person instructs the photographer, uh, instructs the protagonist to wait, I'm sorry. Then we see that as the protagonist waits for an hour, he becomes very conscious of his appearance and he starts feeling insecure. This is the time when he goes through certain magazines. There are three magazines, I think there's the Ladies Companion of 1912. girls magazine of 1902 and the infants journal for 1888 so he goes through these three magazines and that is when he starts getting more conscious of his appearance he immerses himself in old magazines while thinking about the implications of you know what it would be like if he is interrupting the work of the photographer Now after this the studio session begins after a long wait the protagonist is finally called into the studio by the photographer as the session goes on the photographer examines the face of the protagonist expressing his dissatisfaction with the features of how he looked like we see he says if we go back to the chapter and see what he says he sits down and then he says i sat down in a beam of sunlight filtered through a sheet of factory cotton hung against a frosted skylight so you can imagine the studio is designed so perfectly so we could say that the photo photographer is more of a perfectionist kind then he crawled back into the machine again and drew a little black cloth over himself this time he was very quiet in there i knew that he was praying and i kept still when the photographer came out at last he looked very very grave and shook his head grave means serious so you know he is constantly examining the protagonist through his lens and the protagonist starts getting more conscious that you know he is being scrutinized and examined in every detail by the photographer The next part of the story I call the alteration process that is the photographer suggests a lot of adjustments to the protagonist's posture and his facial expressions attempting to rectify some flaws which he thinks the protagonist has in his looks now despite the protagonist's initial enthusiasm to listen to what the photographer is saying he starts becoming more and more uncomfortable if i refer to the text over here you will see he says the face is quite wrong and you can see the other corrections that he 
tells the protagonist to make and how he comments on different parts of his body the way he looks his features so you can see all those comments and increasingly it starts making the protagonist feel very very uncomfortable it happens even with us when we go to public gatherings or any invitations or parties we see that there will be some people who will excessively try to scrutinize you they'll comment on your complexion on your perhaps even you might not have ever thought about how your teeth look like how your eyes look like the comments could be positive or negative but then people scrutinize you top to bottom so that same thing is happening with the protagonist and he is getting very uncomfortable and conscious that discomfort which is felt by the protagonist see what happens as the photographer continues to manipulate the appearance of the protagonist he gets very furious and he asserts ownership on his own face and features he says that i don't care what you think about my appearance but i proclaim i embrace whatever i look like see he says stop i said but i think with dignity that is he of course did not want to disrespect the photographer but at the same time he wanted to convey the point he says this face is my face it is not yours it is mine i have lived with it for 40 years and i know its faults i know it's out of drawing i know it may not be the perfect kind of a face or an appearance he said after that he says there's nothing to see yet i have to develop the negatives first so after asserting himself after putting the point across to the photographer that you don't need to bother about how i look like i am happy the way i am he asks for the picture but the photographer says that you have to come back to me a little later because i am going to develop the negatives and then give you the final output of the picture After this we have revelation of the edited photograph. So when the protagonist returns back to the studio to view the proof of the photograph, he discovers the amount of changes, the retouching that has been done to the final output that is the photograph. The photographer proudly shows the edited image highlighting the enhancements that have been made to the protagonist's features now after this feeling betrayed by the photographer's excessive editing the protagonist confronts him with a mix of bitterness and sadness he says that i was not in the mood of having an artificial photograph of mine taken at this moment and he storms out of the studio leaving behind the disillusionment of the photographer because he was a perfectionist we saw that from the very beginning see how there is a series of conversation exchange of con dialogues between the two he says the eyes don't look very much like mine oh no he answered i've retouched them see he is saying it the photographer does not hesitate at once because this is his way of doing the work every day he says that he had added delphide so that he could add a touch he also changed the arrangement of his hair his mouth his ears and one by one this is a second round of you know uh, judgments perhaps which are passed on to the protagonist and he does not like it he feels very imperfect he feels belittled and then we see what does he say towards the end go on then with your brutal work take your negative or whatever you call it dip it in sulfide bromide oxide cowhide so he's saying that do whatever you like with the photograph adjust it the way you want it and then see whatever you want to do with it because his only intention is conveyed at the end that is why did the protagonist want a picture taken in the first case see he says keep it for yourself and your friends they may value it to me it is but a worthless bauble i broke into tears and left and what was the intention why did the protagonist want to keep it he says i wanted something that would depict my face as heaven gave it to me humble though the gift may have been i wanted something that my friends might keep after my death to reconcile them to my loss so that it could be kept as a fond memory and i wanted it exactly the way i looked that it should be an exact replica of mine so that whenever they 
feel that they are missing me they could look at my picture but you have just altered it to your convenience and that is how we see that the story ends on that note so there are three main highlights of this story first is authenticity in self representation that is just like the protagonist confronts the artificial changes which are made by the photographer today's youth can also reflect on how they want to be represented on social media platforms we live in an age of filters whether it is snapchat instagram or whatever other social media platforms secondly we see the story parallels the pressure which is often felt by individuals to conform to the unrealistic beauty standards which are present today by the filters and editing tools initially it was only limited to movies cinema theater where they had to put up makeup and why did they do it so that they could look presentable on stage but everyone today is running behind all this because everyone is under pressure to look beautiful you have so many products which are launched you have that fair and lovely creams and what not why can't a man or a woman be expected to be accepted the way he or she looks like so we see that finally we see the story embracing uniqueness that is the protagonist's realization of the value of his own unique features is something the youngsters of today should embrace that is their individuality instead of striving for perfection which has been provided to us through digital standards so we see that in essence the story humorously explores the themes of self perception identity and the social pressures to conform to unrealistic standards of beauty offering a commentary on what human beings have been reduced to So that's it from this video. I hope you liked it. Do hit the like button. Subscribe to my channel for more such future updates. Thank you for watching. Bye.